Oh hi, YouTube! Thunderblade in the area. Today we're gonna talk about motors. Motors. Woo! <laughs> okay. Why choose this motor over this one or this one? And which ones are going to use in the future? So. Let's talk about it. So Thunderblade is an electric inline skate, which means that we have motors inside our skates that help us push ourselves up to 40 kilometers an hour. But there's a lot of different kinds of electric motors out there. Which ones do we use? So how do I even start using electric motors? Back in 2014, when I started building my own prototypes, I had no idea which motor to use. So I checked on electric skateboards, but their motors were like really big and they were not meant for electric seat boards they were like rc motor like radio control cars or radio control planes so where do i even start so i tried the airplane motor route you can see here this is a really small airplane motor usually airplane motors are taller but smaller on diameter okay this motor is a uh, 35 37 which means they have 35 millimeters diameter and 37 millimeters height. Okay, I tried this one with a belt drive, but you know, belt drive, they, this actually worked, okay? I could move, but not a lot. This, this one is really, really weak. If you're trying yourself, don't ever use a, such a small motor. They don't work, especially if you're using a belt drive. You see, all the electric skateboards used a motor around 64 millimeters diameter and around 50 to 60 millimeters height it's like huge compared to this one and they use most uh, dri a belt drive or a direct drive or a hub drive so this one actually worked but you know the main problem about belt drives on electric inline skates is if you turn them off or try to skate on your own the drive system holds you back so much, it feels like there's a brake applied, okay? So it's not the best feeling. So scratch this, let's go to the next one. Next thing I tried was quadcopter or drone motors, bigger in diameter, but they are smaller in height like this. You can see this one has a lot more diameter than this one, but it's a lot, but it's shorter in height. Okay, so why this? Because of the, the way electric motors are, are built, the bigger the diameter, the bigger the diameter, the more torque it has. So I figured I needed more torque. This one is a 4108, which means it's 41 millimeters in diameter and 8 millimeters in height. Really small. They also call these pancake motors. But when I went for pancake motors, I scratched the belt drive system and started working with a friction drive system, which means I have this part right here attached to the motor and this part right here, which is uh, 3D printed and covered with polyurethane, okay, inside a mode. And this part here goes directly in contact of the wheel. Let, let me get a wheel here. Okay. so. This part right here, it goes directly in contact with the wheel. So when the motor turns, the wheel turns as well. So why use this over a belt? The main thing here is torque. The difference between the diameter of this wheel to this wheel dictates how much torque do I have. I mean, the motor itself has, has an, a limited amount of torque. How do I better use it? To multiply the torque, we use gears. You know your bicycle, your car, these things have gears to multiply your torque. If this right here has a 25 millimeter diameter and this wheel has a 100 millimeter diameter, it means the motor needs to turn four times to, for the wheel to turn once, okay? So this way we have to spin this four times as fast as this one. So the more times this one has to turn in comparison to this one, you can you multiply your torque, right? If it was the opposite, okay? If I have like a really huge, like really huge 
driving wheel here that turns here, let's, let's say if this wheel was a 200 millimeter, this wheel will turn once and this wheel will turn twice, which means we get more speed. So gears is that like this, torque versus speed. These motors, they have a high RPM and their maximum power occurs high in their RPMs. These electric motors, they have a hard time starting, right? going, starting, starting to go. So it's better to have a big gear radio. So this is a one time to five times, which is massive compared to what you can get with a belt, which is at the most one to two. So that's why I chose the friction drive. But there's an even better, there's just one more thing that for me, it was like really huge and friction drive you actually have to press on the wheel. You have to, you have to push it against the wheel for, so, you, so you can have friction. But at the same time, it means that you can push back and let the wheel go loose freely. So what this means? This means that when the, the motor was turned off, you would be able to get free wheel. So the blade just turned into a normal inline skate. And the third advantage for the friction drive system was it was really lightweight because no moving parts other than the motor, just one small part to, to get the drive system to work. And the motor itself can be smaller because of the really, really big gear rate. A lot of you guys asked me about which motors did I use. So this one is a Multistar 4108 with 380 kV and it uses 8S LiPo batteries, which, which is 29.6 volts. Okay, this one. But then I upgraded to this one, which is almost the same diameter, but a little bit taller. A little bit taller. Okay, this one I don't have the, the, the specific size right now. It was erased. You don't have it anymore here. You don't have it anymore. But it's definitely bigger than the Multistar. Similar diameter. It must be around 42 to 45 diameter. And it should be around, it should be around 18 millimeters height. So this one was the motor that I used on the Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. Okay, this one. So they are actually small, but you have one of these on each leg, on each foot, you can go 40 kilometers an hour. This one is also a 8S LiPo with me with a 30 volt system. Okay, but before we go to the next uh, motor, do any of you guys want a tutorial about how to build the friction drive version? It's like this, you have the motor and you have it inside of a support. And then we have a, a spring here and some kind of rail for this go forward and backwards. And there's a second version of this, like this, which we have the support here and you have the, the spring here and you have a rotating arm so when the motor when the motor spins the inertia from the, the, the spin goes like this and engages the motor so i have these two types of friction drive system that i, I actually used if any if anyone wants a tutorial on these please comment right now okay and if enough people act, are actually interested in this I will make a video. So let's go take a look on the hub motor that I chose. Okay, you can see right here, uh, this is an AliExpress page on this store right here, U Toys Land. And this is the motor. I actually posted a picture about this and this is really, really good if it's true. Sometimes these specs they post on the AliExpress Add. sometimes they are a lie I don't know yet I've bought them it was not very uh, very cheap okay they are kind of expensive but they are a hub motor made for electric skateboards but they have this rounded profile and a really soft tire you can see here the where the cables come out 
and you can see something here. You can see the motor is a 73 millimeters diameter. Okay, this is the can, right? The outside can, like this. So this is the outside can. This, although, although this is a hub motor, it works the same as these ones. You have the stator here where the copper wires are, and you have the can. And you can see the permanent magnets glued inside the can. When we talk about the diameter, we don't talk about the outside can diameter. We're talking about the stator diameter. So these motors are 73 on the can, which means the stator must be around the same as the other skateboards use, which is 63. Okay, I'll bet these motors have a 63 millimeter stator diameter. So how a hub motor works is this, right? You have the can and the Berman magnets, and right here they have some slit to get the tire to glue right here. And then you have the, the tire around it. And then the, the stator, this part here, it goes fixed on the side. And then the can with the tire rotates around it, like this. So let's take a look at other specs about this motor. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down here and we're gonna take a look at, it says it has 500 watts with a 3000 watts max. So what does this mean? Okay, right off the bat, this 3000 watt maximum it means nothing. It's peak performance, which means like could make 2000 watts for one second, maybe five seconds before it just melts. It is rated for 500 watts and it is rated for 3S batteries, which are like 12 volts, up to 12S batteries, which are 37 volts, which is on par with hoverboards and most electric bicycles. It goes up to 50 amps right here. It says the, the tire diameter is 105 millimeter and 65 millimeter total width. And here's a really good information as well that the tires are 60A. Most urban wheels nowadays are 84A or 85A. Back 20 years ago, we used to use 72A wheels. So the smaller the rating, the softer the wheels are. So this, this one is really, really soft if it's 60A. But let's see, maybe the cushioning is really good. Okay, I'm going to show you guys one last, which is with the tire off. Okay, this one right here, you can see is this the, the tire and the motor. So you can see the four screws that hold the tire in right here, here and there. Okay, so you just fit right here like a glove and put on the, the screws. This one's the same motor, okay? So I already bought these motors with the help of everyone that supported on coffee. So thank you very much everyone that has been supporting Thunderblade and me through donations on coffee. I was able to buy the motors but was not able to buy the batteries yet okay we are at 84 percent of the goal to build the prototype completely so since i got enough donations to buy the motors and these take a while to arrive i already bought the motors but i don't have the money all the money to buy all the parts yet so please if you can donate one dollar two dollars anything any 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 amount will help us get to the next prototype. You can see the link right here, okay, for the coffee page. And that's it. If you have any questions regarding the motors or how I'm going to do it or anything else, or if you really want a tutorial on how to build the friction drive system, just leave your comment right here. And see you next time and let's storm the streets.